Hidden within this chair is a full-size desktop class PC, and it still works as a chair. This is it before. Sick, right? Well, actually, that, that's the after footage. I forgot to take before footage, but you get the point. It looks the same. Since the dawn of all of us getting slightly older, many of us have decided we don't want our PC to be a big, loud, dusty thing on the desk that takes up precious piddling space, spare desk space is piddling space. I want my PC to exist, but not exist. And please, oh my goodness, not in the cloud. Anything but in the cloud with 300 milliseconds of latency, are you trying to trigger me? So the all new Chair ATX form factor has some requirements in order to be successful. The PC parts cannot impede the sitting experience. FlexiSpot sponsored this video. They provided the chairs. Oh, that's comfortable. So I'm gonna give you my full rundown of them throughout the video. Oh, I've never really focused on the way it feels. The PC parts have to be fully invisible, but also at least 400% the power of a Steam Deck. My favorite current game runs at like two FPS on a Steam Deck. I'm trying to get top 100 on the hardest level. Can't get top 100 because if I remote play, there's latency. And if I play on this, I get like three FPS. It literally says FPS one. What, FPS zero? No freaking way. The PC parts have to be desktop class. No laptop motherboards, dude. No mini PCs, no mini PCs, and no sticking Raspberry Pis. Jeff, those are cool, but this is a no compromises setup. We get one wire to the wall, but it can't be dangly. No dangly wires underneath. You know, like what's the point of having an invisible setup if you got dangly wires? <clears throat> no wires coming out of the booty. My toddler watches these, okay? So step one is preparing the base to deliver the 120 volt power supply. Now. We get one wire. I don't want any stinking dangly wires dangling under there. So I want to like discreetly feed the wire down the leg. So basically I want to feed an AC power wire through the high quality durable leg base. Hammer, easement style. So that it's not just dangling wherever the PC parts end up within the wow, chair. Wow, dude, rubber mallets are sick, dude. Looks really nice, huh? I put a bunch of holes along the underside of the leg for zip ties, and I made sure the only visible wire comes out the tip of the leg and it's a high quality braided wall. This is our cable now. Boom. Connect those three wires to these three wires. My parents always tell this story about how I used to just sit in a chair with a remote and pretend I could see it controlling a car or pretend I could hear it. All right. I don't know. Now that looks nice. That's what I'm talking about. We've got this. We just have this one coiled wire going to the thing, the thingy thing, the thingy thing. That was nice and easy. And now I just need to fit this into this. So, not quite as easy. Building a PC is basically expensive Legos for men. You've got a motherboard, the CPU, some RAM, all like together in this one little plate. Then you've got this one brick of apparently pure gold known as a GPU and a power supply with a bunch of wires to power it all. So essentially like three giant components we have to hide in the chair. We gotta hide it in the chair. Now, motherboards come in mini ITX, so that's a good way to shrink the motherboard down a little bit smaller. Even then, people typically put them in cases about this size, which, and we don't have that size. We don't have that, because it's a chair. A sturdy, reliable chair with a 3D adjustable headrest and a height adjustable backrest? My first thought was to try and fit it like in the back of the chair. But the backrest mechanism took up most of the space, so I wasn't gonna be able to fit full-size PC components. Now, if I just strap it to the back, that would look dumb, and I'd be able to see it. So that leaves us with just the dump truck area. If I just like mashed it into the cushion and pull off some sort of like magic upholstery, it would still poke me in my cheeks. Poke me in my cheeks, man. But after some tinkering, I found that a motherboard fits perfectly directly where the, the like seat mechanism meets the bottom of the cushion. Yeah, baby. Oh, some nice solid wood though. That's quality, baby. 195 that way. 150 this way. Oh my goodness. It's like it was meant to be. But this means that if I put that there, I have to add one more requirement. And that is that like when I sit on it, it needs to not crush the components, crush my brick of gold. <laughs> now the thickness of the motherboard, CPU, RAM, all of that is about 48 millimeters. So theoretically, if I put 50 millimeter aluminum standoffs and then just extend the bolts by 50 millimeters, I can create a 50 millimeter cavity to put the motherboard in. According to my research and calculations, 50 millimeter thickness underneath the cushion is the max height before it becomes noticeable, which would be perilous and awful. But also, getting any longer than that, you get into sheer strength, which is where if you lean back the bolt, uh, we just have to use a low profile CPU cooler that's rated for 100 watts and it fits. 
Motherboard gun. Very specific, teeny tiny, itty bitty baby screws that will go straight into the nylon y stuff. That's on there, man. The thing is, though, a standard GPU is about 120 millimeters tall. So that does not fit. Way too tall to hide vertically. So I use a PCIe riser cable, which means we can lay it on its side. And it'll fit right there in that same 50 millimeter cavity as the motherboard. But next is the power supply. And power supplies, even in small form factor, are 63 millimeters tall, so I gave up. Doesn't really fit. Just kidding, because there's a different form factor called flex, designed for server racks. That's 40 millimeters tall, meaning it fits in our cavity. Boom. Fine, boom, sound effect. Use a two-part epoxy to affix this to the bottom of the housing is just the best way to do it, trust me. Directly centered. We're gonna use this space underneath the motherboard as like a cable routing management channel. But it only fits in this spot, so I'd have to take the GPU out, and the GPU doesn't fit on the other side unless you get a low profile GPU. Essentially the same GPU, except for one of them is more expensive. Boom. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Ooh, that's gonna be close. Now, in order for the fans to be oriented the right way, it did mean that I had to twist the riser cable. Wow, I really don't think this is gonna work. I have mangled it in order for it to be in the proper position. And I broke a bunch of different ones, um, but the right one is in the description. Okay, so this is insane. This is where the footrest goes on the footrest model. Which is incredibly comfortable, by the way. It perfectly fits a 3.5 inch bay like that. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty wild, it just fits. It's like it was meant to be, dude. So this means all of my PC components were just neatly sandwiched between the cushion supporting material and the chair mechanism. And the chair is still supported by 50 millimeter standoffs. But it's all visible. You can just see it's just hanging out. Which brings us to step four. Spend the next five weeks of your life diligently learning Fusion 360 CAD modeling software. All right. What do I do? And craft a custom, perfectly fitting housing. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut the hole, right? Extrude. That can then cover all of your PC components. Okay, and you gotta make sure that it has the necessary I.O. ports that you would find like on a normal desktop computer. But it can't just be like a little square box because that would be really noticeable because no chairs are shaped that way. And then you also have to make sure that there's the necessary holes to create like positive pressure airflow. And lastly, some plastic tabs that will hold the GPU in place in the right spot because there's not a safe way to mount it to the underside of the chair. And then fail at 3D printing it about five times. I feel like a kid showing his dad what he made for school. Made this at school today, dad. Oh my goodness. We gotta see if it fits. I have to see if it fits right now, dude. Oh boy, here we go. Okay, my hole missed by about five millimeters. I measured incorrectly and had to reprint it a couple times. Wow. It could be worse. To finally arrive at this. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a good looking fit right there. But you can just skip this step and download the, uh, download the file. Wow, dude, like a stinking glove. It's designed specifically for the FlexiSpot C7 Max. And I'm really proud of it. You can have it. You have it, bro. And then you can just like pay some random person on the internet to 3D print it for you. So I designed it with these perfect little square holes and they fit what's called a keystone module. Oh, that's clean which means that you can just put in whichever module you want. They're designed for like production things. But for us, it means that you can have whatever IO you want built into your chair, all nice and neat and tidy. So for me, I went with two HDMI, a microphone jack, an aux out jack, USB-C, ethernet, all just nice and neat in there. And if you want a different configuration, you just buy different keystone modules and then plug that into the motherboard on the other side. So it's like, it's like a giant sandwich that you're gonna have to put together. But while you're doing the giant sandwich, it's like you need a, another hand to come out of your chest and start spreading the mayo. And then you need like another hand to come out from over here and like, while one hand spread mayo, this one's spread mustard. And then you need like two other hands to come from the sides so, so that you can like push the bread together all at the same time. And so th this is step 12, I think. Step 12 is grow a bunch of extra hands straight from your torso like General Grievous. The hardest part here is that the power cable has to run all the way through all the tiny little holes like as you're assembling it. Whatever you do, don't forget anything. Yo. Oh. So you'll have to like solder and heat shrink as you sandwich Dude. it together. Everything's fitting. Bro, this is kind of insane. The good part is that everything's gonna work fine first try, so you don't have to mess with opening it ever again. And this goes in here. Oh, oh, it got power, yes! 
Oh, okay. For sure, guaranteed. Okay, here we go. Why is the GPU not working though? What is that? Uh, something was wrong and I had to open it like seven times. All right, the GPU's not coming on. The GPU fans weren't spinning, so I replaced the riser cable that was connecting the GPU to the motherboard, but that wasn't it, still wasn't working. And so it turns out just the GPU died, like something about it, I don't know, it's been in a box for a long You're time. You're telling me this, it's just the stinking GPU's dead? It may have had engine grease on it or have, you know, crashed in an aviation accident different story. So I opened and shut it like 12 times and then finally it was ready. So I went and ate the sandwich my wife made for me. Oh, thank you. Put on a few final touches and then it was as simple as assembling the FlexiSpot C7 Max. You see, my parents got the story wrong though because I wasn't just sitting in a chair imagining to drive a car around aimlessly. No, see, we would get these remotes from the thrift store. They were really cheap because they didn't have a car that went with them. And I still, to this day, remember every single turn to get to our house from the thrift store. I intentionally remembered it. I had a plan. See, I'd sit in the chair at home and I was thinking, okay, if the person who brought this remote comes back to the thrift store and then brings the car, I'm driving that bad boy home. So I'd sit in the chair, I would drive the car home, and then I'd run out in the driveway to see if the car was there. It wasn't just me imagining it. I had a purpose, okay? My imagination had a purpose. Here we go, let's do it. <laughs> uh, let's go! Okay, it's flashing. I don't know what that means. Fans coming up? Yes, fans spinning. <gasps> Let's go! <laughs> the chair PC! Hey guys, what's up? This is a chair, but it's a computer. That's pretty insane. Just looks like a chair, man. So how do you use it? Now, look at all these dumb dangly wires. I'm not actually gonna use the keystone modules on the bottom, dude. Look at these dangly, dumb, wires. Dumb dangly, dangly wires. Dangly, dangly wires, wires, man. You can't get the dangly, you, you think I'm gonna use them? Those are for emergencies. There are a few ways. But before I show you that, this chair will make you feel like a billion dollars, but only if a billion dollars feels like a memory foam latex seat cushion designed for 12 hour seating sessions and 5D armrests to support your arms in almost any position. Even when you're falling apart emotionally and sitting like a monkey that has a 10 pound brick on the back of his neck. Seat depth adjustment allows you to sit comfortably even after you get instantly jacked from following yo boy Roy on Instagram. I reached out to FlexiSpot for this, okay? Not the other way around. See, I've been sitting in this chair for months now. I've tried all the other chairs, not all of them. I've tried most of them. This is the one. All the 3D prints, everything is available for just this chair specifically. If you buy a C7 Max, it supports the channel and you get the best lumbar support you've ever felt. They do a 30 day free return policy for risk-free trial and you get a 10 year warranty. Just remember, they don't come with the PC parts installed. You've got to do that yourself. I said, I got to sit on what I've created because it's a chair. I got to do it. Oh, that's comfortable. A zero latency, one wire desktop setup is what it must be. There is built-in Windows wireless display casting, but it still adds 100 milliseconds of latency and makes me want to drop a brick on my toe for fun, and it stutters the whole time. So yeah, we're not doing that. The first way to use it is with a wireless display and HDMI transmitters. HD 120 hertz wireless display, 10 milliseconds of latency, if that. First try! Dude, it's just working. Goodness, bro, that's sick. But I know what you're thinking because you're a sweaty tryhard. But there's still about 10 milliseconds of latency. That's a compromise, man. Which is why the second way to use it has zero visible desk, has zero latency, and I totally skipped the step where I put an optical USB-C cable all the way up through to the face so you can have an on-face display, 120 hertz, with the only problem being... Do I look dumb? You look kind of dumb. So I had to take it one step further. The big screen VR headset. Complete immersion, total comfort, an entire setup consolidated inside your chair. So there I was, sitting in a chair, playing with a controller, but this time, it was real. I brought my imagination to life 25 years later. But it gets even crazier, because for the first time on the channel, I present you with a performance graph. Insane. <laughs>
But there was one final thing to test. Does leaning back cause the sheer strength of the 50 millimeter standoffs to snap and crush all of our components? <laughs> it's not broke? Dude! <laughs> Dude, that's sick. That's the most practical thing I've ever built. Thank you again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring the video. The latex seats, man, you gotta feel it to believe it, man. It reclines, it's got the footrest, and they're doing a Memorial Day sale right now. Combined with their brand day, you can get an extra discount by using my code, basically, for an extra 10% off. They've also got this new, like, Japanese joinery bed, dude. It's, like, super simple to assemble. So thanks for watching. Use my links in the description. Have a good day. We're watching, Nicholas. Just passing through.